So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're just uh, we, we've just opened up the webinar, and I see that folks are uh, are joining in. So welcome. Uh, I tell you what we're going to do is we're going to wait for maybe a couple of minutes uh, just to allow as many people in uh, to make sure that they don't uh, that they, that you guys don't miss the first part, uh, and then and then we'll do the official start and we'll get this thing going and and. Uh, so hang in there for a second. The other thing, in, in case you're hearing an echo, uh, just to let you know that that's, that's going to be with us until we've got a couple of videos that we're going to show you. Uh, that echo will be with, you, with us until after those videos, and then we'll be able to get rid of the echo. So if anybody is hearing that, then uh, you'll only have to hear it for a little while. So we'll wait for, uh, for just a couple of more minutes to let a few more people get in, and then we'll get the... Uh, We'll get the session underway. So here we go, folks. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the uh, 2021 uh, Ministers uh, Awards. Uh, we'll also be celebrating awards uh, from uh, the harvesting section, the processing sector, aquaculture, and the inland fisheries. Uh, my name's Tom Smith. I'm the Executive Director of the Aquaculture Association of Nova Scotia. I'm very pleased and, and was quite honored to be asked to moderate today's session as we recognize uh, the very best of the folks working in fisheries and the seafood industry uh, around Nova Scotia. You know, just a, it, it's a, it is a celebration and, uh, and we're really thrilled about it. When you think about Nova Scotia seafood and Nova Scotia fisheries operations, more than 25,000 people work in this industry in Nova Scotia. And we're gonna celebrate some really special people uh, this afternoon. Uh, I'm, I know I'm joined by Minister Caldwell, who you can see on your screen, and I'll be introducing him uh, in just a, a short moment. Uh, before I go, just one little thing. I think that, that uh, I know you know, you all know the work that fisheries uh, and aquaculture have done over the last number of years to develop this uh, seafood brand that you see in the top left-hand corner of the screen. And on the top right-hand corner of the screen is, is our ANS logo. Uh, and and I, I think that it's important to, to recognize that that both Minister Caldwell has been hold, hosting this this conference for a lot of years, and the ANS has hosted the, the Sea Farmers Conference for a lot of years. And and it was a couple of years ago that the minister approached us and said, "Why don't we bring these two sectors together?" It was a great idea. We had a wonderful celebration uh, last February before COVID, uh, and so this year is is all a virtual series. And I hope many of you have enjoyed the five sessions uh, that we've already put on uh, as part of this virtual, uh, virtual series. The other thing I'll give a shout out to is Al McNeil and, and his folks at the Inland Fisheries Group. I think that many of you might be the first time you've seen the new Fish Nova Scotia logo. And so, uh, so we'll be celebrating some of, some of that stuff this morning as, as well. So just a couple of, uh, of housekeeping uh, things to, to clear up. So all of you are gonna have your audio turned off and your video turned off during the webinar. But I'll tell you, use the, use the, the Q&A and the chat feature at the bottom of the screen. Uh, celebrate some folks. Uh, if you wanna send a message, you can use that chat screen uh, to send a message to some of the winners and, uh, and, and really get involved in the, in the whole celebration. I want to take a moment to thank, as I, as I mentioned, we've already had five sessions, but we've had two presenting sponsors, uh, Farm Credit Canada and the Nova Scotia Fisheries and Aquaculture Loan Board, who have been our presenting sponsors throughout the entire conference series. Uh, and if you're looking for more information on Farm Credit Canada, we thank them so much for the support. Go to www.fcc.ca. And right here in Nova Scotia, our own Fisheries and Aquaculture Loan Board have been a big supporter of this conference series, and we, we thank them. 
uh, and go to fishloan.novascotia at novascotia.ca. So for this session today, we're very pleased to introduce three sponsors who have stepped up and, and, and helped us with this session today. Uh, Saltscapes, Taste of Nova Scotia, uh, and Sobeys. And we've got a message from Saltscapes. Greetings, dear friends. On behalf of Saltscapes and our parent company, Advocate Media, we are proud that Saltscapes is celebrating 20 years of Canada's East Coast trusted by local paid circulation publication, now reaching more than 540,000 readers in print and digital form, with each bi-monthly issue and thousands more high-yield engaged consumers with each carefully curated by local consumer event. With each issue of Saltscapes, your Made Right Here stories are specifically created to showcase our immense regional pride in our farmers, producers, and processors, and strengthen Atlantic Canadian consumers' understanding about food security and how to shop smartly for their food and beverage. Our small economy has been scarred by the recent unprecedented events, so we are building new opportunities in the Saltscapes family including a performance-driven virtual event under Saltscapes Expo. We look forward to extending a hand up to our East Coast neighbours and to the people and places where the retail and visitor economy has a very long road to full recovery. Our humble heartfelt thanks to you for joining us in celebrating Canada's glorious East Coast together in 2021. We look forward to seeing you soon. So thanks to Saltscape. Sorry about that, folks. So uh, one thing that all winners are going to receive today, and again, courtesy and thanks to Taste of Nova Scotia for supplying uh, these great gift baskets along with the award certificate uh, that the minister will be presenting uh, here today. Just to give you an idea of today's, uh, today's rundown, uh, these are, we've got 17 awards in total that we're going to be presenting today. Uh, and uh, we'll go through those all as, as we go, and you can meet these folks. Uh, and again, I encourage you to use the chat line to say hi. And with that, uh, what I would like to do is I'd like to introduce, uh, I know we know needs no introduction, everybody knows them, Nova Scotia's Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture, the Honorable Keith Caldwell. Uh, thank you, Tom. It's wonderful to be here today. It's exciting to see we get a chance to honor some of the people who have done such a great job to put our industry in first place across the country in exports. Thank you, Minister. Appreciate that very much. Uh, we're going to, uh, oh, there's, where's my, yeah, I'm gonna take out this sound just so that we can see that we can, we can get by the echo. So hopefully you're not hearing the echo anymore. We're gonna move right along the very first uh, award that we're going to be presenting today is Product Development and Export Achievement. This award recognizes a company that produces unique seafood products and excels at marketing and exporting those products to the world. And the winner of this year's Export Achievement Award is AKSO Marine Biotech. AKSO Marine Biotech is a leading dry sea, cu sea, cu sea cucumber processing company lo located in Hackett's Cove where they have access to the best wild Canadian sea, sea cucumbers caught fresh from the coastal waters of Nova Scotia. In 2019, AKSO released Nova Scotia Atlantic Sea Cucumber capsules to the market. In 2020, this product was awarded best new product from the Retail Council of Canada's annual Canadian Grand Prix New Products at Award. And I can tell you from experience, folks, that is not an easy achievement. Uh, that's a wonderful achievement. Nova, Nova Sea Atlantic is a registered trademark for natural health ingredients developed from Atlantic sea cucumber as nutrient supplements. The high quality raw materials make them stand out from their competition, and they are currently pursuing global distribution. 
So congratulations to AKSO Marine Biotech. I now want to welcome Lincoln Ellsworth, and I'd ask you to turn on your audio and uh, your, your video, and Minister, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I know uh, I don't see the other gentleman yet. Oh, I, I think I'm here. I might just be down your uh, docket. <laughs> Great to see you today. Thank you. Great to see you today, and it's a wonderful award. I know I know Sam very well, and wonderful to see that uh, he has worked with you and the whole team that you have around this very innovative product. So it's with great pleasure we make this award to you, and uh, it's wonderful to see you know we're putting out more value-added products and something that's really going to distinguish Nova Scotia from other places in the world. So congratulations. Well, thank you very much, Minister Caldwell, and I, I appreciate all that nice stuff, Tom. I, I turned my video on because I didn't know you were going to say such nice comments, so uh, I appreciate that, and um, the whole team's very uh, appreciative of being considered. Uh, Sam sends his regards. He's in uh, China right now, so with the time zones, he wasn't able to uh, be here in person. Otherwise, you'd be uh, socializing with him, but uh, it's, um, you know, sea cucumbers and interesting animal it has its unique challenges just like every uh seafood does and uh this really shows that uh we think we're on the right path so i appreciate it greatly congratulations lincoln say hi to sam for us i will indeed okay moving right along hey you know what this is actually going pretty well way better than the dry run so this is this is great this the, the next award is quality focus this award recognizes a company that focuses on producing the highest quality seafood products. And this year's recipient is Lobsters R Us. The Lobsters R Us is a family owned business uh, from Richmond County, Cape Breton. They began operations in 2004. They've grown to be a staple in the community, employing nearly 100 people during peak season and purchasing lobster and crab from over 70 local fishers. Recently, lobster, Lobsters R Us created a Fisher report card uh, as a traceability tool. The Fisher report card enhances the quality of product by setting standards and accountability at the beginning of the seafood supply chain. The report card is delivered to harvesters weekly to produce quality information and allow process adjustment. This has had a significant impact on the quality of the product entering the facility. Lobsters R Us is also an AFF recipient for an automated, automated crate washer which provides consistent cleaning of crates to ensure food safety and high quality. So congratulations, Lobsters R Us. Now I'd like to welcome Blair Martell, Martell and ask him to join, turn on his camera and join us, Blair. All right. I can hear him. Yeah, hold on. Uh-oh, uh having an issue. <laughs> there, we there we go, sorry. <laughs> We, our plan's full of technology, but we can't get Zoom to work. <laughs> I can't believe that, uh, Blair, that you, you have a technological problem down there with the high-tech operation you have in your facility is fantastic. Well, it's kind of embarrassed about it, but the, again, the award, I really appreciate the award and recognizing us for our work in the past in this, and, but really, the real person, the people that have to be recognized, the fishers that have bought into the program and have responded so well to the program, and it's brought us success with quality product. So we have to really put our kudos to, uh, to the fishers that have, have grasped this project. Well, I want to personally congratulate you and your whole staff and all the fishermen who are involved in this process. This is critical, as you know, to make sure we get the top quality products in the marketplace internationally and can compete and get a higher price for our products than typically other ones. And that pays big dividends, not only to yourself and your company, which is very important, but also to the fishermen that fish for you and, and indeed for the province. And, Overall, it's a part of our biggest part of our economy. Our commercial fishery and lobster pays them uh, plays a major part in that. And being the number one exporter in the in Canada, the seafood is uh, pretty exciting to see, and exciting to see the technological advancement your company is making too. It's very very impressive. We, we really appreciate the, the kind words, and like I say, we're. We're focusing on change, not not uh, being status status quo. So I think that's going to be the success of the whole industry. Thanks so much, Blair. Congratulations. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Congratulations.
Moving on, our next award, uh, talking about innovation, is Innovation Achievement. Uh, this award recognizes two companies that have developed new and innovative products and services. And our first award uh, today goes to Kenny and Ross Limited. Kenny and Ross Limited are an innovative company located in Port Saxon, Shelburne County. They were established in 1945 by local entrepreneurs that believe that the province of Nova Scotia processed a rich source of marine byproducts that could be processed for added value. After much technical advancement and innovation, they now produce unique forms of fish gelatin and collagen from fish byproducts and export them worldwide. They were also a 2004 Nova Scotia Export Achievement winner. Congratulations to Kenny and Ross Limited. And I now want to ask uh, Jody Crook uh, and ask him to turn on his camera and join us, please. And Minister, over to you. Well, welcome, Jody. Today, it's a wonderful achievement. Your company is continually making fantastic achievements and really adding to the value of our industry and the province and value added to really where we have to be as we go through the process. So it's exciting to see the work you've done. And I can only imagine what's, what you've got planned for the future. It will be uh, even more exciting. So congratulations on this award. and. Uh, we look, of, look forward to many great things in the future from your companies. Well, thank you. Thank you, Minister uh, Caldwell. Uh, Kenny and Ross has been uh, very uh, expedient and uh, working in the ever-developing uh, economy that's uh, been taking place over the last several years, uh, but it is a team effort. Uh, we've been in business doing a, a value-added product from the fishing industry for many years and looking to uh, expand our, our presence in North America. We are known worldwide, but uh, the North American market is growing and we uh, hope to continue to grow with that market. So, so thank you and I appreciate the award and, uh, and also all the sponsors and everybody's took place with today's uh, award ceremony. So thank you. Thanks, well deserved. Jody. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Jody. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Moving on to our second uh, Innovation Achievement winner. Uh, and this year, the second re uh, recipient is Claire Machine Works. Founded in 1972, Claire Machine Works has gained a solid reputation for building world-class machine engineered industrial products and solutions that improve the livelihood of the global marine and fishery sector. Claire Machine Works has been bringing innovation solutions forward for many years such as custom fish grading solutions and their bait chopper, which helps prepare bait safety. One of their most recent innovations is a trap stacker, which helps with the lifting, moving and stacking of traps on board vessels. They were also a winner of this year's 2019 Lobster Bait Challenge, a challenge sponsored by Ignite Labs in Perennia to develop a lobster bait using byproducts of the ground fish processing industry in a sustainable way. So congratulations, Claire Machine Works. And I'd like to invite Vince and Joyce Stewart and ask them to turn on their cameras and join us. Well, thank you very much. And thank you. More than pleased to be here. Great to see you both. And it's exciting the work you're working on. It was down when they were working on the bait challenge and it was a quite interesting innovation to come up for that. And, and also your, your trap stacker. That's, that's very impressive. That's just two of the things I'm going to talk about today, but there's so many great things that you're working on with your business. And, you know, the industry wouldn't be successful if it didn't have suppliers and innovators like yourself to make their jobs healthy, uh, safer and more productive. So it's great pleasure. I present you with that award and it was a hard choice. I can tell you with a lot of great, great companies. So you're in good company with uh, your competitors and all different facets of, uh, of the fishing industry, but it's well deserved, and I know you've worked hard to get to where you are today. And again, congratulations, uh, Vince Joy. Over to you. Why, well, thank you very much, Minister Caldwell. We're truly honored and humbled to be recognized by our peers here. Uh, we have worked hard, and uh, but I certainly would be remiss if I didn't mention my team, as it's easy to dream when you have a team. And we do have a team. And firstly, I'd like to start by thanking my wife, 
who certainly has put up with many years of all of this <laughs> and uh, you know, and all my team, uh, including the CDENE at University of St. Anne, ACOA, uh, Gary LeBlanc at Oakleaf, all my team, um, the ID Lab, Dalhousie, NSBI, so many to mention. Uh, we're just truly, truly honored by this uh, award. And I must, uh, you know, mention Ignite and the Big Challenge, which has actually launched us in a direction that uh, is truly going to be interesting. And keep your eyes out for recent, uh, you know, um, innovations that will be public, actually, and known. So uh, uh. we can't wait to launch product, but launching product is uh, a timing thing. So we should be out there soon for everybody. And then again, uh, I must mention all the team at Claire Machine. Uh, Claire Machine, we have brilliant minds at Claire Machine, and I would be uh, remiss if I also didn't mention Metatron Solutions. Alex Stevenson, who is a brilliant innovator and works us, with us very, really closely. So, without going on and on, I just, I just say I'm truly humbled and really pleased, and thank you very much for the award, Mr. Connor Caldwell. You should be very proud of your organization you put together. And I can understand uh, the support your wife gives you because without that, it's just pretty hard to <laughs> pretty hard to get anything done, all the weird hours oh, and yeah. everything you have to work. And she's probably there uh, making sure you do all those weird hours so you can uh, succeed. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Caldwell. Yes, 45 years of it, I say she, she deserves a medal. <laughs> 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 thank you. Well, congratulations, you two, and and just and thanks to everybody on the line. By the way, I see a a, a chat message here. Felicitations, congrats to to Vince and team. Well deserved from Andre Elaine and the rest at the CDENE Business Development and Entrepreneurship Team. So you're getting some chats, and I'm 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 wondering. I'm I'm hoping I'm going to be able to use that. Uh, if you want a dream, you need a big team. So I'm gonna. I think I'm going to use that. So congratulations. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Yes. Moving on to our next award. Our next award is our first staff award. Uh, and this is for the coordination, design and rollout of the electronic licensing system for sport fishing. Uh, this year's recipients are Jason LeBlanc, Alan McNeil and Colin Berhariwala. I think I got that right. From Inland Fisheries Division, along with Miriam Kaiser and Clay Bates from Services Nova Scotia and Internal Services. In March 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic, many anglers felt unsafe visiting licensed facilities uh, in person. So some vendors opted out of selling licenses. Developing an online licensing system became a priority. The inland fisheries team began work immediately on design of a system for the purchase of general and salmon fishing licenses online. They helped develop and test software, navigate government processes, and launch the online licensing system. On August 3rd, 2020, the system went live and there have been no unresolved issues since its launch. Miriam was the project manager for the e-licensing project uh, and guided both her staff and staff from Communications Nova Scotia and Service Nova Scotia and internal services through the development of the application legal review. Architecture board review and worked tirelessly to keep the project moving at a fast pace towards resolution. Both Miriam and Clay navigated the privacy review, penetration testing, and beta tested the application over many iterations to ensure the system would, would address uh, our needs and be both user-friendly and error-free for all end users. Because of the hard work of these, of these staff, anglers can now confidently uh, purchase their licenses online. So congratulations to Jason, Alan, Colin, Miriam, and Clay. And I'd ask you to turn on your cameras uh, and join uh, Minister Caldwell. And Minister Caldwell, over to you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, just to give everybody a little bit of history on this uh, as we move forward. Uh, Alan had brought to me several times uh, the licensing, electronic licensing uh, opportunity for the province, but the bill was $3 million. And development time would have been astonishingly long. So when COVID came along, uh, Alan came to me and said, 
we think we've been talking to Service Nova Scotia and Internal Services. We think we can put something together to make people more at home and, and allowed to get licenses online, something that he and person want to do and the staff wanted to do for a long time. They did that, they did it very, very well and rolled it out very, very, very quickly. And I, I believe as part of that, we've, we've sold more efficient licenses we, in the province last year than we sold since I believe 1984. And that really is, says a lot for the great team we've had put together from our department and from Service Nova Scotia Internal Services. And I wanna personally congratulate all of them. It was a very difficult time for all of us when, that, when they were doing this great work. And now we have something we'll have uh, forever and to be able to do more and more online things and make it safer for people and more convenient too. I can remember trying to go fishing years ago and I didn't have a license. And by the time I decided one evening at about 10 o'clock, there was no place to buy one. So now you can go online anytime and get your license. So congratulations to the whole team. It's, it's been exciting to see the great work that you're doing and continue to do. And, uh, you know, so many times the uh, bureaucrats get blamed for not doing the work they're supposed to be. I don't have that problem in my departments. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you this team from the two departments uh, really came together and solved a serious, serious issue we had and will help people for a long time to come. Thank you, Minister Allen. Why don't I turn it over to you and, and you can take it from here. Sure, thanks and uh, appreciate that. Man, those kind words, Minister, uh, we're all honored to be nominated to put it in perspective. Yeah, we sold 76, more than 76,000 sport fishing licenses that year, last year, and we hope to sell more this year. That gives you an idea of how many people enjoy the activity. Uh, I wanna thank our staff uh, who, who are here uh, for making this a priority among many other priorities in a, a very confusing, difficult time uh, about a year ago. Um, they did great work. Clay Bates, whom uh, I've been working with on the uh, fir first or second or third iterations of this for many years, was very well positioned to, uh, to roll out and develop the software, and his team did an excellent job. And uh, Miriam, whom we uh, nicknamed uh, Tom Brady, uh, was our quarterback. I uh, had a lot of fun with that one, but she uh, did a, a lot of the work, had just the right amount of push and pull, pushed us to, to get back and, and keep it current and used her influence and pull to, uh, to make it happen. So uh, really appreciate this. Uh, it's working and uh, I wanna thank everybody here and thank you for the honor. Congratulations, folks, and uh, and I noticed on one of the chats that uh, uh, someone said that they used the online system several times, and it was fantastic, very easy to use. So that's a that's a great endorsement for you. Congratulations, folks, and we're going to move on to our next award, uh, and uh, we're very pleased. And like I said, the partnerships between the Aquaculture Association and Minister Colwell. Uh, over this last couple of years, bringing these conferences together uh, has been has been very worthwhile. Uh, so the first Aquaculture Association Award is for Farmer of the Year. Uh, Minister Caldwell helped us uh, present these at our annual meeting earlier, but uh, this year's award goes to Wake Up a Fisheries. It's done, they've done so much for their community. They have given the opportunity for First Nations people to have meaningful employment within walking distance of their homes and have generated wealth for the community. Wake Up a Fisheries is well underway in making their operations world-class as they implement new technologies and infrastructure and provide staff with the training that they need to succeed. So I'd like to uh, invite Donald Davis who will be accepting the award for Wake Up a Fisheries. And so Donald, if you turn on your camera and join us. And Minister, over to you. Thank you very much. Well, Donald, it's, it's fantastic the work that the Wake Ball has done in the Fair Trout Farms there and the great work that you've done putting so many people in the community to work and um, people from outside the community as well. And at the same time, producing a world-class product. It's fantastic. I think it's going to open a lot of opportunities for, for, your, for your band and for the area all together and for the province. I mean, you're the biggest trout farmer in the province, I believe now, and it's exciting to see and the great work you're doing and processing you're doing and everything else that connected with it. So congratulations again. It's wonderful to be able to uh, recognize this very, very important achievement. 
Uh, thanks, Minister. On behalf of the Wekaba First Nation and particularly the employees of WFM Fish Farm Partnership, we'd like to thank everybody for the award and the recognition. Uh, when you mentioned community, we, we now have over 80 people employed at the hatchery farm and processing plant. And we're pretty proud to say that uh, over 70 come from the local community. So again, thank you very much. Thank you, Donald. Congratulations. Congratulations to Wakeba and all the work that you're doing uh, uh, in, in, uh, in Cape Breton. Thank you. Okay. Moving on, uh, our next award is for Industry Development and Advancement. Uh, and uh, this award recognizes two organizations that have worked hard to help industry develop and thrive in today's competitive global seafood marketplace. And the first recipient uh, this year is the Inverness South Fishermen's Association. Inverness, Inverness South Fishermen's Association is an active multi-services organization that champions lobster quality, safety, leadership, and communication for its membership. They were also one of the first organizations to become accredited in Gulf Nova Scotia under the Fish Harvester Organizational Support Act. The, the association has been forward thinking in their approach to conservation and quality measures. They have worked closely with DFO to establish regulations that help conserve the lobster fishery and help lobster handling courses and have held lobster handling courses for their members. They also have been a recipient uh, of an AFF funding for lobster quality. They work closely with the Fisheries Safety Association to promote workplace safety initiatives and encourage training within their membership. Even during the pandemic, they always strive to communicate with their members online. Uh, so congratulations to the Inverness South Fishermen's Association. I now want to welcome Jordan McDougall. And Jordan, would you please turn on your camera? Oh, you already have your ahead of me. Yep. <laughs> Minister, over to you. Jordan, it's great to see you today. Yeah, it's always good to be wonderful safe. conversations we have and the great work you're doing around quality and you know, contributing a tremendous amount to the province's economy with the work you do. Oftentimes people don't get recognized. Uh, you live in a small community and, and don't get recognized for the fantastic job and the, and the uh, things that you're doing to help all of Nova Scotia. When we do the exports and the quality products you put together and the work you've done under lobster quality handling courses and other initiatives you put in place, it's, uh, it's making a big difference. It really, really is. And uh, it's wonderful to see your organization so, you know, so well positioned and really interested in making things better in your community and, and for everybody. And I can tell you, when people uh, get quality lobsters like you provide, they're, they're happy people. <laughs> And uh, so, again, it's a personal pleasure for me to uh, make this presentation today. I would just wish we could be in person, all of us, in all these presentations. That would be nice. Uh, I enjoy your uh, conferences over the years, and uh, it's a good time. Um, Tom has gone over most of my uh, speech and yourself on uh, the lobster handling uh, courses that we've had, uh, Michelle. Uh, Thibodeau had, has done uh, two courses for us and did a marvelous job. And our first one, we were a little nervous that we wouldn't have that many members come. And we had 50 members come to the first lobster handling course. And we were real pleased with that. And then we had, uh, on one day, we had lobster handling one and two. And Michelle was given the course. And we managed to have 74 members come out for that. So it was real you know, a pleasure to see the members come out and take part and uh, learn how to take uh, better care of our product. And uh, it's, you know, quite a learning experience for us. And uh, we learned quite a bit. And um, on behalf of the people that, you know, have helped me win this award, uh, you know, Crystal Rankin is probably number one for uh, helping me, my secretary treasurer of our organization and uh, helps us a lot with the, uh, with the website and Facebook and getting the message to the members. And we're very fortunate to have her. And we're also fortunate to have Nicole Sampson, uh, your provincial rep in our area, she does a tremendous job for us. And uh, she's the one who convinced me after um, six months of uh, 
you know, trying to work. She, well, she worked me over like a used car salesman to take this position. <laughs> and uh, quicker than a Vegas wedding, I was in the Oval Office and uh, <laughs> he did a good job. So on behalf of uh, all the Inverness uh, fishermen and that, I'd like to thank you all. And uh, one other thing, we I'm working with the Area 19 Crab Association now, and we're starting to work on the North American right whale problem. And, um, you know, we'll be needing some help later down the road, Minister uh, Codwell, and uh, hope you can help us so as we tackle that troubling uh, problem we have with the with the deaths of the right whale. And last year, the uh, federal department, uh, their hard work that was zero. So that was nice if we can keep that going. On behalf of all our members and myself, thank you very much. We'll be looking forward to working with you on that. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Moving on, the second recipient uh, of the Industry Development and Advancement Award is Crane Cove Seafoods. Based in Escazoni, First Nations, Crane Cove Seafoods is a primary resource harvester of snow crab, shrimp, and haddock in the Atlantic Canadian waters off Nova Scotia. Crane Cove Seafoods' mission is to ensure sustainability of the species harvested and to maintain effective and, effect and efficient operations that are not only profitable, but they create and sustain meaningful employment for community members of Escazoni First Nations. Crane Cove Seafoods employs between 100 and 150 full-time and part-time employees. Under the leadership of Leonard Denny, they have become very successful and are now one of the most important sources of revenue to support the community of Escazoni. Leonard is an active participant in many fish, fisheries management meetings and is a leading voice within the community. So congratulations, Crane Cove Seafoods. And I want to ask Alexis Stevens if she'd turn on her camera and join us, Alexis. Perfect. We can we can hear you. You're kind of a little uh, a little uh, turn up your volume a bit, maybe. Hello. Can we can hear barely now? hear you. Hi. That's better. Uh, so, Minister, I'll turn it over to you. Alexis, how are you doing today? It's wonderful to see you and uh, the great work that you're doing in the community and and the fantastic approach you've taken to the resource. It's nice to see uh, this kind of business happening and all the benefits in the community and a spinoff outside the community as well. So it's great uh, opportunity and we want thought for sure it would be a great opportunity to put the minister's award to you for uh, you and your band and to uh, Chief Denny, make sure you say hello to him, to him for me, if you would please and the great work that he's doing in all the band council and the members that work in the, in the processing and facility that you have there and the other operations you have. Congratulations, it's uh, wonderful and we look forward to a lot more in the future. So Alexis, if you want to turn off your mute uh, or unmute yourself, there you go. You say hi, we'd love to hear from you. Hi, um, I just want to thank you, Will Aliak, for the, for the award. We're Thankful. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Alexis. Congratulations to you and to all of us First Nations. Yeah, well, have, a great, have a great rest of the day. And moving on, folks, uh, the next award uh, is our first Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, and uh, the, this award recognizes this year that we're going to recognize three individuals for their long and outstanding service in the industry and highlights the achievements that they've made. And the first award recipient is Ronnie Heighton. Ronnie has held almost 50 years of experience fishing lobster and herring and fished, uh, excuse me, <coughs> and fished ground fish uh, for over 30 years. Throughout his career, Ronnie has been extensively involved in many roles to support the fishing industry. Ronnie is a retired president of the Northumberland Fishermen's Association. He has been the vice president for the Canadian Council of Professional Fish Harvesters for the past three years uh, and is a long-standing board member. 
He is a past president of the Gulf of Nova Scotia Fleet Planning uh, Board. He is currently a member of the Eastern Fishermen's Federation, the Nova Scotia Fisheries Sector Council, and a board member of the Nova Scotia Fisheries and Aquaculture Loan Board. Uh, I don't know what, Ronnie, you're a busy man. <laughs> he has also participated in the Gulf of Nova Scotia Area Species Advisory Committee for over 25 years and volunteered for numerous committees and initiatives. Initiatives. Congratulations, Ronnie. And if you would, uh, Ronnie, I'd like to ask you to turn on your camera and join us. There he is. Min Minister. How are you doing today, Ronnie? Oh my, just perfect, Mr. Minister. I had her driving my tractor already this morning, so I'm all That's set for the day. That sounds good. I was driving mine a little bit yesterday in the sunshine. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it wonderful. a little bit of that. Yes, it's just, uh, you know, this is, uh, you, you and I have had a long history together and a very positive one as far as I'm concerned. And it's just really important to recognize the great work you've done for the industry overall. Uh, you always have the same calm mannerism and you have the ability to get things done when other people can't get them done. And that's, uh, it's been a pleasure. We've had some interesting discussions over the years. And sometimes we agreed and sometimes we disagreed, but at the end of the day, we come to an understanding that both of us benefit from always. So it's personally, I want to say it's, it's great to uh, see that you're still involved in the industry, even though that you say you're retiring. Uh, so hopefully you'll see you in a lot more boards and meetings and things we do. And uh, it's, it's just wonderful to see we have representatives like we're honoring today through the whole, uh, all these presentations and the great work that you've done over the years to really move the industry forward. A personal thank you and a thank you for all Nova Scotians. Uh, thank you, Mr. Minister. It's, uh, it's been quite a ride. You know, I've uh, represented fishermen all over Canada and other parts of the world, of, uh, of course, and uh, it's been uh, it's been nothing but a pleasure, uh, uh, you know, to uh, to see the the positive things that and little bits of change you could make here and there. Uh, maybe we didn't have any big wins, but we certainly had a lot of little ones. And uh, you know, and uh, thanks to your department, uh, you know, uh, we had. Uh, a good many ministers conferences together and uh, I certainly look forward to the day that we can get rid of this COVID and we can go back so we can carry on shake hands and have a drink together with all our friends and our peers and I thank you very much for the the award it is uh, it uh, it's hard when heart winching it you know it's uh, it's recognition for stuff that uh, you know, that I've done over the years, and uh, it makes me proud that I, I will be able to uh, receive that. Thank you very much. Ronnie, it's well-deserved, and uh, it really has been a pleasure working with you over all those number of years. And when I started the Minister's Conference in 1998, uh, that was an interesting discussion. We've come a long way since then, and those little wins that you're talking about are, have accumulated to be a big win. So... It's one piece at a time, like building a house. Put one piece in and put the foundation down. You work on it from there and you've got a house. We've got a house now, very successful one. And for all, all the people today, you're all contributing to that, of course. But it's just those small things we put together. And all of a sudden, we, we're the world leaders uh, or Canadian leaders in seafood and the world leaders in lobster. So it's quite an accomplishment. It's really quite an accomplishment. You were part of that and everybody... Uh, that's anything to do with the fishery has been the same. So well, those little wins have made a huge difference. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Minister. Congratulations, Ronnie. Uh, uh, Ronnie, I have the pleasure of serving on the fisheries uh, sector loan or sector board with, with Ronnie. And so at the next board meeting, I can't wait to see if we can find some more projects for you to take on. This is going to be wonderful. Yeah, I may have time for some, yeah. And uh, I'm really pleased. Everybody take a look at the chat line and the number of folks that are sending uh, congratulatory messages to you, Ronnie. Uh, so congratulations to you. Thank you very much. 
And moving on, uh, our second uh, Lifetime Achievement Award uh, is Sam Ellsworth. As a member of, the, of several Canadian fisheries task forces uh, and study groups, Sam has represented the Canadian fishing industry at many international forums, including International Commission for the Con Conservation of Atlantic Tunas, the North Atlantic Fisheries Organization, the United Nations Law of the Sea, and the Fisheries Re Resource Conservation Council. He has appeared before the standing committees of the Canadian Parliament and the Senate. Sam has also had, has significant industry experience in the seafood processing sector. He was president and co-owner of Sambro Fisheries Limited for many years and manager of the corporate engineering department of National Sea Products Limited. Today is the managing director of the Southwest Nova Tuna Association. Sam is responsible for Canada's largest blue tin, uh, bluefin quota fleet. Throughout his career, Sam has maintained a reputation for fairness, collaboration, and high ethical standards. Congratulations, Sam. And if you would, I'd ask you to turn on your camera and minister, I'll turn it over to you. Well, Sam, it's wonderful to be able to make this award to you today. And as I've just said uh, to Ronnie Hyten, there's a lot of people in the industry contributed so much and you're one of those people. And the changes that you made have really helped Nova Scotia's seafood industry and will into the future for generations to come. It's been a long time since you first started working and, and today it's, it's nice to be able to present you with this, this uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. There's so many things that people don't realize that have happened in the industry and where we've come over the years. And as we put more quality in place and uh, pro programs and stuff like that, it's been wonderful to work with you and your organization that you've represented. So congratulations today. And it's, uh, I can't wait to see everybody again. This is, uh, this is uh, very sad for me. We can't be in person for all these presentations. So thank you, Sam, for the great work you've done. And I know you'll do in the future. Uh, thank you, Minister uh, Cole. I, uh, I have to say that um, I'm really appreciative of this, and I want to also thank all the good folks at the Nova Scotia Department of Fisheries and Agriculture for this kind and thoughtful gesture. I also want to congratulate Ronnie. Ronnie and I go back a long ways in this and spent a lot of time at tables over the years and, and representing fishermen. I have to say that I'm, I'm really humbled by this, yet I feel deeply honored. In, ex in accepting the award, I, I certainly do so on behalf of all the fishermen and processors that I've had uh, the pleasure and privilege of working with over the past many years. And I can think of so many out there whom would be far more deserving than me. And I hope this doesn't come across as trite, but together, although we've come a long way, there's still a challenging course to steer ahead of us. And if I had a wish to share today, it would be to see some unfamiliar and much younger faces in the myriad gatherings and consultative venues that will determine our future. Make no mistake, marine industries and the fisheries in particular have always been the true lifeblood of this province and indeed all of Atlantic Canada. I also wanna thank my family for their unwavering support that has permitted my involvement I especially give full credit to Dale, my beloved wife of 54 years to this very day. Today is our 51st, 54th wedding anniversary. Wow. So to all of you in the industry and all the associated government departments, I thank you for all that you do, but also and most importantly, for your friendship and your respect know that this reward was not the result of working in isolation. Truly, it is representative of a collaborative effort, and I offer my sincere thanks and gratitude. Thank you. Well, Sam, it's, uh, it's been wonderful the work that you've achieved already and the things, things you'll do in the future as well. And happy anniversary, by the way. That's quite an accomplishment, 54 years. But the time you've spent on the tables and traveling and doing all those things, it's a uh, and I can relate to that because the last few years, of, until COVID came along, I was gone most of the time. But the seafood industry, we got to remind everybody all the time, the seafood industry is the number one 
employer in the province. It's a number one export in the province now. When I took the portfolio over eight years ago, we were in third place. And we're number one, we have been for, I guess, the last five years. And that's because of people like yourself and people that are, today we're honoring and all the other people that work out, every fisherman, every, everybody that drives a truck that moves the fish around, everybody works in a fish plant, owns the fish plants, all those things. Sam, you're so right. It's that whole teamwork. And because of that, we, we see great opportunities for young people now, great careers, all kinds of things that we can do in the province we couldn't do before. And as we add the technology into all this, it's going to even become more exciting. So again, thank you. And again, congratulations on your anniversary. And I'm sure with COVID now, there's not much you can do to celebrate, but uh, just be safe because it's, uh, it appears that it's getting worse in the province now. And hopefully it, it, it'll go to a little bit higher maybe and then settle, settle down and go backwards again. But uh, be very careful, everyone. And uh, thank you again, Sam. Thanks so much, Minister. Truly appreciate it. Congratulations, Sam. Happy anniversary. And I'll just share with everybody to uh, check out the chat line. There are lots of anniversary wishes coming your way, Sam. Uh, the third uh, Lifetime Achievement Award, moving along, is Patty Gray. Uh, besides being a licensed fisher, Patty gives a lot of his time and energy as vice president of Brazil Rock Lobster Association, president of the Swordfish Harpoon Association, member of the Eastern Nova Scotia 4VSW uh, Management Board, member of the Halifax West Commercial Fisheries Association, manager of Sambro Harbor Authority and Harbor Master for the Port of Sambro. Patty is also a member of the Auxiliary Coast Guard Search and Rescue Team. Uh, as can be seen by the number of associations and committee Patty sits on, he is a very active member of the fishing industry in Nova Scotia. He works hard uh, to keep fishers in his home community of Sambro involved and inform on current events and industry. And unfortunately, uh, Patty is not able to be with us today, but Minister, I know you know Patty very well, so I'll turn it over to you. Well, it's unfortunate Patty couldn't be with us today, but Patty is a very busy guy, as you just indicated. And Patty's been a great guy to work with. I've met with him so many times and uh, had very good discussions. And the direction, the one thing I hadn't mentioned before with Patty and all the people that we've talked about here has really helped me and our department uh, move our industry to the position we have now as number one exporter of seafood products in, in Canada. And it's the great work that they do and all, all the things like the list of Patty, things that Patty's been involved in is, is astonishing. And that can be said for a lot of people, but he's also a very special guy. He's calm, cool, and collective all the time, always has the best interest of the community at heart and the, and the industry at heart. And that, that's, that's a treasure as far as I'm concerned. And he's a, a very shy and a, a self, I don't know how you put it, but just, just a really good person. That's, that's the best way to put it. Really good person, cares about people and does everything that will help the industry uh, progress and, and, and be better in the future. Thank you, Patty. Uh, thanks, Minister. <clears throat> and I think there's lots of accolades that you can give people, but to say they're a really good person, that kind of says a lot. Uh, we'll move on to our next award. Uh, the next award uh, is, a, uh, is another staff award. Uh, this award goes out to a bunch of folks uh, for the eradication of smallmouth bass from Piper Lake. And this year's recipient, recipients, plural, <laughs> are Bruce Osborne, uh, Jason LeBlanc, Alan McNeil, uh, John McMillan, Andrew Lowell's, Sabrina Wolders, and Colin uh, Berhariwala from Inland Fisheries Group. Uh, Gordon Greenhan, Greenhorn, Green Corn, sorry, Gordon, I apologize for that. Gordon Greencorn and Ralph Hyten from the Marine Division and Kevin Beckers from the Department of Agriculture. In 2019, Nova Scotia Department of Fisheries and Aquaculture staff captured two smallmouth bass from Piper Lake in Pictou County. Piper Lake is the first known occurrence of illegally introduced smallmouth bass in this important trout and salmon system that is connected to more than 100 lakes within the St. Mary's River watershed. 
Inland fisheries staff immediately developed a rapid response action plan to eradicate this invasive species from Piper Lake. With the assistance from Kevin Becker's team from the Department of Agriculture, staff worked long hours to implement the plan. Technicians and biologists worked to build a specialized equipment and logistics and get the required certification training. Senior staff consulted with other government agencies, the Mi'kmaq, and stakeholders to seek support, keep them informed and provide much needed information about the project. The project was successful in completely eradicating smallmouth bass and saving one of the most important salmon and trout rivers in Nova Scotia from this destructive invasive species. So congratulations to Bruce, Jason, Alan, John, Andrew, Sabrina, Colin, Gordy, Ralph, and Kevin. And I'd like you all to turn on your cameras and Minister, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Well, I really personally want to thank our great team that uh, worked on this very difficult problem. Uh, you know, when people illegally bring invasive species like smallmouth bass into a small lake like Piper Lake, it can uh, eradicate the trout population, salmon population, and everything else in that whole river system. And fortunately, that was prevented by the great work with this this whole team it was a really great team effort we have lots of meetings on it to discuss how we could do things and oh, i, I want to give uh, credit to everybody that worked on this it was it was one of those things that uh we used uh, rotenol uh, to destroy all the fish in there after everything that could be removed by other other means and relocated before that happened and we had support from all kinds of different, different organizations, like the Ecology Action Center, uh, Nova Scotia Salmon Association, Atlantic Salmon Association, the list goes on and on. And that has a lot to say for the great job that each one of these individuals did to make this happen. It was a real team effort and it's, it was successful. And not only that, but this uh, St. Mary's River system is one of the areas that we're gonna be investing with the federal government and, and volunteers in the community there to see if we can bring the Atlantic salmon back. And if this bass could have, would have escaped into that system, would have eliminated any possibility of that salmon, that salmon river ever coming back to it. It's a great resource that it was years ago. I can remember as a child fishing in that river and there was salmon everywhere. Uh, there isn't any more today, but there is some and we need to bring that back. So. I want to personally thank every one of our team for the great job they've done on that. And it's nice to see you working together with, uh, you know, the not only Rainland Fisheries but our our uh, uh, other workers, CRCs, and the Department of Agriculture. The whole group together made a great team. It's a great to see this great work, and it's going to make a difference uh, way into the future. Uh, for that river and the economy of our province. The salmon fishing probably is one of the best economic drivers that can be in the, in the province and that helps save that river. Thank you very much, everyone. And this war award is so well-deserved. Thank you. So thank you, Minister. And I tell, why don't we start and, and perhaps maybe Bruce, uh, I'll, I'll throw it over to you and uh, you can introduce some folks and, and start us off. Great. Thanks, Minister, and thanks, Tom. Um, I just have a few comments, then I'm going to ask Jason to, to say a few words on behalf of the team. Um, as the Minister mentioned, it's the first time in the modern era in Nova Scotia that uh, fish toxicant rotenone was used. So naturally, you can expect there are many, many questions to be answered to uh, regulators, to stakeholders, and to many, many people. And the team, I think, really went above and beyond to answer those questions. And that's how the support that was needed um, was found. And the importance of this system um, was not lost on anybody, the St. Mary's River system. So uh, staff answered every one of those questions. We also uh, incorporated good ideas and suggestions that came uh, our way that helped improve the project in a number of areas. And I wanna say that we're very fortunate to have an aquatic invasive species specialist working in our department. We have a fantastic team overall, but. But Jason LeBlanc, uh, our spirit, spiritual and expertise uh, leader for this project, um, is a specialist in this area. And uh, we 
we we've done a very good job under his operational leadership for this file. So I'd like to turn it over to Jason to say a few words on behalf of the team. Thank you, Bruce, and, and thank you, Minister. Those were nice words, Bruce. Um, the minister is exactly correct. This was a very complex project um, with a lot of moving parts and, and a lot of parts that were intertwined and dependent on each other uh, succeeding. You know, if, if one part failed, the entire project fa would have failed. Um, so I just wanted to recognize uh, how, how complex working on a very, very small lake like this uh, and seemingly um, perhaps in some minds an easy problem to solve um, is so complicated. Uh, so um, we're in year two of a, of a five or six year project. Uh, and I just wanted, I don't know if Kevin's on the line or not, but I just want to take the opportunity to, to really thank Kevin on behalf of my team uh, for, for what he did for us in terms of containing smallmouth in the small headwater lake uh, in year one. Uh, without, without that effort and his expertise to, to lead that part of the project, um, Minister's right, smallmouth bass probably would now be widespread throughout the upper St. Mary's River. Uh, so that was a, a critical piece uh, that without that, we would not have been able to apply Rotenone uh, in the second part of the project. Uh, so, so thank you, Kevin. And, and thank you, Minister Caldwell, for your recognition and your support uh, on, this, on this project. It was one of those projects that uh, had, had moving pieces from, from the bottom to the very top. Uh, and, and really everybody needed to be pulling on the, same, on the same rope for this one to succeed. So just finally, uh, thanks to, to my team uh, the resource management team, you were determined to, to see this project succeed. Uh, and, and you're really the reason that, that, it, that it did. Um, we learned a lot of, along the way. Uh, there were some barriers, uh, not, not to sound punny, uh, but, but there were some barriers along the way, which, which your expertise and your knowledge got us through. Uh, and I'm very proud of you all. So, thank you. So thanks, Bruce and Jason. Before we go, I've made a significant error and I, and I offer my apologies because Colin, I didn't introduce all members of the team. So perhaps turn on your mic and just can you introduce us to, to the youngest member of the team? Uh, yeah, sorry, Isabel was <laughs> napping uh, until this moment, so uh, she was she was behaving nicely on my lap uh, until she she needed her burp. So this is Isabel. Uh, she was born in January, and she'll be getting a rod in her fishing rod in her hand soon enough. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so thanks to everyone. Congratulations, everyone, and congratulations. Uh, and uh, uh, appreciate you participating. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to move on. And the next award is the second Aquaculture uh, Association Award. And, and like, the, uh, like the, 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 the fisheries department, the seafood department, people that work in our industry, uh, in fisheries and aquaculture, are so important. And this award uh, is to the employee of the award uh, of the year and awarded to an employee of an aquaculture producer or processor who has made an exceptional contribution to their workplace through leadership, dedication, and performance. And this year's award goes to Colton Dion of the Dion Oyster Company in Southwest Nova. Colton's dedication to the family business is recognized daily by his hard work, care, and attention to detail. He constantly strives to learn about new technologies and developments in the industry and has taken on leadership roles by leading several Atlantic Fisheries Fund projects, finding new markets and implementing new innovations on the farm, such as their new solar powered barge. Everyone, please join me in congratulating Colin, or sorry, Colton. And Colton, I'd ask you to turn on your camera and please join us. And Minister, I'll turn it over to you. I think Colton. Uh Hopefully I'll see you here in a second, Colton. But uh, this is. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Uh, I yes. Can hear you. Yeah, we're having some. Uh, it's not allowing me to start the video. I guess. Ah, that's well deserved uh, award, and I got to see your your processing facility on the water. It was fantastic, and innovation, and all the great things that you're doing on on your farm down there with your family and your father and everyone it's just fantastic and the quality product you're turning out is something else something you should be very very proud of and i know you are and as you grow more and more markets and add again a strong basis for nova scotia's economy and i do love your oysters <laughs> i so, appreciate that uh so make sure you say hi to your dad for me 
And uh, I hate this. I hate this COVID thing that we can't get all together now and share some stories of all these, you know, all the recipients. It's uh, it's uh, that's one thing I miss with this this part of it. No. But it's a great job you've done, and it was well deserved uh, award from the Aquaculture Association of Nova Scotia. I know. I thank you, Minister. And uh, just put in that uh, I've been. I think I was six years old when I was introduced to the oyster farming. That's when uh, Nolan, my father, started it. And it was just a passion of mine right from the get-go. Um, as a young kid, just seeing how sustainable oyster farming is and agriculture in general. So uh, as, as time goes on and I grew up, it's just more challenges. And I think we uh, are, you know, excited to, to challenge traditional methods and, and set a standard for the future of, of agriculture. So... As, as many people have echoed, um, this is really is, even though it's employee of the year, it should be team of the year. Um, it's, it's sort of saying like, like Vince, when you have a great team, it's, it's easy to dream. And, and that's we're, we're gonna keep on dreaming. So thank you. Congratulations again. Congratulations, Colton. Say hi to your dad. Will do. Uh, and uh, everyone, just a little bit of a shout out to everybody that's on the call. Uh, the chat line is, is really kind of exciting to see uh, everybody participating, congratulating all these worthy, uh, these great recipients of these awards. So keep up the good work. Uh, moving on to the Seafood Legacy Award, a very special award. On occasion, someone makes such significant contributions to the Nova Scotia seafood industry that they shape the industry as we know it. This award commemorates an individual that has gone above and beyond to strengthen the seafood industry in a way that will have lasting impacts. And this year's recipient is Fred Green. Fred uh, has been the owner of Fisherman's Market for over 60 years, earning an admirable reputation as a respected voice in the seafood industry. Fred was instrumental in guiding Fisherman's Market from a little fish market on the Halifax waterfront into a thriving international seafood company with over 150 employees several locations throughout Nova Scotia and recognition across the globe. Fred celebrated his 81st birthday on November 18th, 2020 and, and decided that he would retire his ownership in Fisherman's Market. Uh, he has worked long and hard and we can only hope uh, many more of us to achieve such a milestone in our careers with the same work ethic and vision that Fred has always shown. So congratulations, Fred, and I'd ask you to turn on your camera and join us. And Minister, I will turn it over to you. Uh, good afternoon, Fred. It's uh, wonderful to be able to present this award to you. You've uh, had a very distinguished career in the fishing industry and really set new standards for quality, export achievements, you name it, you've done it. And it's uh, when you visit your any of your facilities, it's great to see the friendly staff that you have trained over the years and the great things that have happened. So this is, this is really uh, an accomplishment that not many people will ever, ever achieve. You know, growing from a small little business uh, to one that has a reputation worldwide and a solid reputation worldwide. We're going to miss you as you retire, but I'm, I'm sure that you won't re stop thinking about the industry and doing some things to continue helping it along. So congratulations and thank you so much for all the things you've done for so many people. And thank you on behalf of the province of Nova Scotia. Thank you very much. And, uh, and thank you to the province of Nova Scotia and those who brought my name forward for this distinguished award. Also, special thanks to my wife and family for their support over the years. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, both the present and past management at our locations over the, over the years and for all the good work. Um, and thank you, especially, Mr. Minister. Thanks, Fred. Pleasure to see you. Yeah, thanks. And uh, I know I'm speaking on behalf of everybody that's on the, on the call that we've enjoyed the products from your business over a lot of years. Congratulations. Thank you. Moving on. Uh, this is a kind of a really interesting, and Minister Caldwell has mentioned a number of times about the challenges of the pandemic and COVID over the last year. In 2000, 
and 20 was a difficult year and COVID-19 presented many challenges for global seafood industries. Our businesses and our individuals in Nova Scotia seafood industry worked exceptionally hard to continue operations and we should be proud of all of this resilience. Uh, this award provides special recognition to an organization that provided except, exceptional support to the industry. And I'd like to introduce uh, this year's recipient, uh, the, Nova Scotia seafood, or the Nova Scotia Fisheries Sector Council. Nova Scotia Fisheries Sector Council is an important- This is the picture at the end, so I gotta hang on. Oh, no problem. Is that Fred still? Okay, that's no problem. Um, uh, where was it? Okay, it's an important source for all industry. Lisa, yeah, we'll be back to you in a second. We just said a little glitch there. Uh, all industry resources on COVID programming, policies, and procedures. Uh, the Nova Scotia Sector Council coordinated and created COVID protocols for harvesters and plants, developed a COVID web portal, and coordinated seafood plant workplace assessments to help assess risks and implement COVID protocols. Uh, they facilitated ongoing industry engagement with federal and provincial agencies to support labor attraction and retention initiatives in the wake of COVID labor shortages and help develop labor attraction advertising campaigns for seafood businesses. They were also co-project lead for the development of the Grant Thornton Industry Support Program, the one window portal for information of all COVID related industry relief programming. And congratulations to the Nova Scotia Fisheries Sector Council. And Lisa Fitzgerald, I'd like you to join us and turn on your camera. And Minister, I'll turn it over to you. Well, I know well, I can there because I saw her earlier. <laughs> I can tell you from personal experience when, when COVID first hit, my phone never stopped ringing uh, from the industry. And with the with the serious concerns they had, not knowing exactly what to do or how to do it. And it was a very, very difficult time for all of us. Everyone was afraid that they might be shut down, that the markets would be gone, you name it. And rightfully so, people were, were worried. The sector council stepped up. And Tom, you mentioned a lot of the things they've done. But more importantly than that, they have an incredible uh, relationship with industry. Just an incredible relationship. They're, they're trusted. They really deliver on programs that help the industry. And, and it's a real pleasure to see them uh, do the work they do. Never an issue for us, it's just the opposite. It's always great partners to work with. And, and as we see the great work they've done just in, just in COVID, but that's only a little bit of what they do. It's a whole lot more than that. And I personally wanna, I personally wanna thank them for, for being there when we needed them and the industry needed them. It was a very difficult time. Uh, I know I was on the phone some days, 18 hours, and it didn't matter what day of the week it was when this all started. And a sector counselor was there with us, coming with solutions and ideas. And uh, it, it was great to see, and you've seen the results of that so far. I mean, we've been very fortunate. I'm gonna knock on wood here, I'm a little bit superstitious, but um, you know, the industry's done very well. Uh, to keep COVID out of our processing plants. Uh, we've done very well with the marketing and organizations such as the sector council made that possible. That's why we're leading the, the world now uh, and, the, and the things we're doing is organizations like this and the great people and uh, that, that work at the sector council, the whole group, everybody. So a personal thank you from me from helping with the things we need to get done in such a, a fantastic way and making people appreciate what they had to do and not argue about it because that's accomplishment in itself. <laughs> so thank you so much. It's a, a, an award so well deserved as all these awards are. Lisa, I see you got your you got your camera working. That's great. Yeah, I don't I don't know what happened there, but uh, yeah, I'm uh, I I am on now. So, and uh, on behalf of the staff and uh, and the board of directors of the Nova Scotia Fisheries Sector Council, I'd like to uh, to thank you, Minister, for uh, for this award and and the recognition for the work that we did. So, uh, 2020 uh, was definitely a year to remember, and uh, in our province, because uh, we were on unprecedented times, 
and uh, helping the fishing industry navigate through a pandemic uh, was top priority for the sector council and uh, is continuing to be a, a priority as well as, uh, as we continue to see jumps in cases and, uh, and things like that. So as uh, the fishing industry was deemed essential, uh, work still carried on. Uh, everyone continued to, uh, to go to work in our industry and we wanted to ensure that this could be done in a safe manner and look at all avenues as to how we could provide support through guidelines, web portals, and awareness of funding support that was available to, uh, to the industry. But uh, partnerships uh, that we made to help move us through COVID uh, were critical. And uh, we give thanks to the support that we received from the province of Nova Scotia through provincial fisheries, uh, labor and advanced education, and public health to help us to get the, uh, the tools that, uh, that we needed and especially the industry associations. So we worked closely with the associations to be able to come up with uh, guidelines and protocols and things like that and uh, to see what was doable uh, you know, to implement inside of uh, the industry. So their involvement was key. And uh, the sector council will continue to be responsive uh, when it comes to human resources training and attraction and uh, retention needs, um, that's uh, that's what our what our focus is and our in our role and uh, and I think the important thing is is that um, responsive uh, being responsive to the industry is uh, is is key and 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 uh, we're fortunate that uh, that we have organizations that uh, that play that role um, you know on behalf of on behalf of the industry. So we just want to thank, uh, thank you for, uh, for recognizing the, the work that we did. Thank you very much for the great work that you do to, on behalf of all of us in the province. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, uh, thanks for being here. And, and uh, just for everybody's benefit, like I've had the pleasure of working alongside Lisa on a lot of this stuff and, and uh, her ability to keep this all front of mind over the last year has been a great asset to the province. Thanks, Tom. Our next award uh, is, the, is for Marine Debris. And uh, we want to acknowledge the many individuals and organizations that work hard to clean our shorelines. And this award provides special recognition to two organizations that went above and beyond. And the first recipient is the Meat Cove Development Association. Meat Cove Development Association was the first organization to receive funding from NSDFA's Marine Debris Cleanup Program. They collected 975 kilograms of debris, 975 kilograms of debris, which included fishing gear from the shorelines of Meat Cove Beach. Meat Cove Beach is a popular tourist des destination and was named one of North America's 50 top beaches. We greatly appreciate these efforts uh, to keep the beach pristine. Congratulations to the Meat Cove Development Organization. Uh, Derek McClellan uh, can't join us, but he did share with us a, uh, 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 just some, some words uh, from, the, from the association. And on behalf of the community of Meat Cove, we would like to express our appreciation on being one of the groups selected for this award. Sorry that we're not able to participate via Zoom, because of difficulties in regards to internet in our region. Uh, we are honored to be recognized and grateful to be the recipient of this award. We'd like to thank the Honorable Minister, uh, uh, Keith Caldwell, Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture for this award. And Minister, I'll turn it over to you for a few words. Well, thank you very much, Tom. And uh, the Meet Cove Development Association approached us uh, a while ago saying they wanted to do a cleanup and we had a new program in place to assist communities or community organizations to do uh, clean up on the beaches. It's critical to have these beaches clean that, you know, when you're, when you're rated one of the top 50 beaches in North America, that's quite an accomplishment. That could vanish very quickly with all this debris was left there and the community didn't take a stand and, and remove it to make sure that they have the uh, pristine. Also, improves our environment. So I wanna give a really big thank you to the Meat Cove Development Association for the great work they've done with this. Uh, I hope this be a continuing thing that they'll do and hopefully the amount of debris they get each year will go down in, in numbers and a whole lot less and 
maybe just an afternoon with a couple of garbage bags will will, will do the trick. But th this is the sort of thing we have to do all over the province. We're marketing Nova Scotia as the clean, pristine, water soft Nova Scotia. And because of that, we're getting premium prices for our seafood products. And this debris problem could cause us a lot of problems. If uh, some photographs were taken of some of our beaches that are normally pristine with all kinds of garbage on them from wherever it comes from. So we, we put this program together. We're enhancing it this year again uh, to make it more attractive to people to uh, take us up on it. I know we work with the Aquaculture Association. I was on one of the cleanups with Tom, with you, as you'll recall. And that was a lot of fun that day. And I don't know how many tons we got off the beach that day, but it was a lot. And the whole community, once they see, understand what we were doing, they come out and helped. And I know Cook Aquaculture come and helped. And uh, some of our staff, even the mayor that day was there. And we we're in Digby area. So it was wonderful to see. So these things are so important to us. And it's so important for tourism, so important for marketing, and so important for our environment, just to make sure that things are cleaned and Indeed, we have to maintain our beautiful province as beautiful as it is. So thank you very much to Meat Cove Development Association and it's well-deserved award. Thank you, Minister. And uh, moving on to the next award, which is another uh, award for, uh, uh, for marine debris. And the second award goes to the Cape Breton Environmental Association. And all you have to do, you know, I was, I was, I was, thrilled to see this picture uh, that, that they sent of the work that they did uh, in Cape Breton. And it, re it did remind me, Minister, of that day that, that we spent on the beach cleaning up down in Sandy Cove. Uh, the Cape Breton Environmental Association undertakes community-based environmental initiatives with the help of volunteers. In the past three years, they've coordinated and facilitated over 30 shoreline cleanups throughout Nova Scotia, or throughout Cape Breton. Uh, this includes removing 411 lobster traps and thousands of pounds of fishing rope from Cape Breton shorelines and returning salvageable gear to fishers in the community. And congratulations to the Cape Breton Environmental Association. And I'd like to ask D uh, Dylan Yates to turn on his camera. And please, would you join us? And Minister, I'll turn it over to you. Hello, and uh, how are you doing today? Hopefully you don't have any internet problems like we've seen in some other areas. And uh, it's uh, wonderful, again, to recognize you and your organization for the great work you're doing at cleanup. I talked a lot uh, prior, to, um, prior to this presentation with the earlier one, and it all applies. You know, when you see great organization like this and people taking their time to go and clean the beaches, it's really commendable. And so things we have to do as Nova Scotia, we've got a beautiful province we live in. And the fact that you gather this equipment up and can send it back to the fishermen that can use it again, that have lost it uh, because of storms, uh, that says a lot too. That means that product is uh, recycled. And indeed we, we keep our province cleaner and our environment cleaner. I think there's a lot of attention. I know there's a lot of attention now of keeping our province uh, as clean as we possibly can. And, this is another form of uh, littering, some of it, and some of it's just plain storms and other things that happen to equipment that wash it up on the beach. So again, thank you for the great job you're doing. It makes a difference to the province of Nova Scotia and to our economy, and also highlights the great province we have. So thank you so much, and thank you to, personal thank you to every one of your volunteers and the great organization that puts this together. And we look forward to working with you on the uh, clean up programs again this this coming year. Uh, and I know that I spoke with Dylan earlier in the week and I was sure that he, so Dylan, I don't know if it's your camera that doesn't. I am here. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm unable. So if your audio is working. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. My uh, camera's uh, not working right now for some reason, but yeah, thank you so much for the words, uh, Minister. It's, uh, I'm honored to accept this award on behalf of Cape Breton Environmental Association today. And you know, it's, it's been a long three years for our volunteers, uh, our organization, we don't have any paid employees. We run basically solely on volunteer power. So the amount of work, the amount of work that our volunteers uh, do, you know, in three years, and it's just, it's just amazing. And uh, we've seen a, a, a dramatic change and shift 
uh, uh, with regards to this issue throughout the province. And we're starting to see a lot of organizations and individuals uh, starting to step up to the plate and uh, in tackling the issue uh, with marine debris, because marine debris is, of course, uh, is a number of different things. It's, you know, fishing gear is one of those issues. And uh, we see a lot of fishing gear here in Cape Breton, you know, and as you say, uh, it washes ashore for a variety of reasons. Uh, most of the time it's due to storms, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, we really appreciate uh, the award and uh, looking forward to working with your department in the future and uh, hats off for offering funding uh, we were going to apply to that last year, but we actually received some funding from another stream. So, yeah, just uh, we really appreciate, uh, you know, being invited to take part in this uh, the ceremony today. And, yeah, it's a lot of uh, a lot of great work being done in the province right now. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for the great work you're doing. And we look forward to your application for this year. <laughs> And thanks, thanks so Dylan, and congratulations. And interesting to note that, that a couple of things. Number one, the last session for the of the five sessions that we put on this year virtually for the conference series was on marine debris uh, and opportunities and challenges on, in an evolving issue. And the other thing is, is just to mention, I see on, on the chat line a reminder that today is Earth Day. So there's, there's uh, no better award to be giving on Earth Day than these two marine debris awards to these to these very worthy uh, worthy recipients. So congratulations, Dylan. And I just wanted to say hats off to uh, me, Cove, uh, the people up there. That I was up at that shoreline a few times, and I actually cleaned that shoreline myself a few times. But there was a lot of heavy metal and stuff like that there, and. And I will say hats off to them because that's a, a major tourist destination. I've met people up there from Quebec, all over the, all over the world, even from Germany. And and to to see the the mess of that shoreline was it, it was really sad. So hats off to uh, to the Miko uh, Development Society for tackling that shoreline. It's uh, really great to see the community, you know, uh, taking action and getting these areas cleaned up. That's great, Dylan. Appreciate it. And just. Uh... I see congratulations to Meet Cole from Nicole Sampson, who's saying beautiful Meet Cole, and it is. Moving on, folks. Uh, the next award is another staff award. The st third staff award is to recognize staff for managing very challenging drought conditions at the Fraser's Mill Hatchery. And this year, the recipients are Daryl Murrant, Stephen Thibodeau, Struan McIntosh, and John A. McGilvery, from, our, from the Inland Fisheries Division. Uh, a prolonged lack of rain throughout uh, the Antigonish area during June to September resulted in extremely low water levels at the Fraser's Mill Hatchery. In late July, the reservoir was such that contingency planning took place to manage the risks associated with the prolonged drought, which had not been seen at the hatchery since 2001. Water use at the hatchery had to be reduced by reducing the number of fish on site through transfer or release and increasing the density of fish in the remaining ponds. Throughout this in increasingly stressful scenario, staff remain committed to saving the 2020 stock and work tirelessly to manage the few fish on site and to ensure the safety of transferred fish. Staff secured auxiliary pumps to pump discharge water from South River Lake back to the hatchery, a task that required refueling gas powered pumps every three hours, all hours of the day, seven days a week. Uh, this was an exceptional level of commitment and the only reason that they were able to successfully navigate the extreme low water without losing the entire year class of trout. So congratulations to Daryl, Steve, Struan, and John. And I'd ask you guys to all turn on your cameras and join the minister and minister, I'll turn it over to you. Well, I want to personally thank you all for the great work you've done on the, at the hatchery. If it wouldn't have been for the work you've done, and I don't have to explain it to you, but the people that are watching, these fish would have died. and We would have uh, lost a very valuable uh, resource we have. And I, and I know there's a great deal of dedication that you all have to maintaining those fish and making sure they're available for stocking and all the other projects we do. This year, our inland fisheries uh, group is uh, is the third award, and I think it's fantastic. Shows that the over the years that so many I, I believe that so many things have been positive been done by the inland fisheries operation, but without recognition. 
And all these three things we talked about today were critical. And even at the time of COVID, they had to do this and it made it very, very difficult. So we're working now to see if we can get the better systems in place. Uh, this is something I don't believe has ever happened at Fraser's Mills before, but I stand to be corrected on that. But it wouldn't have been for your dedication and, and timely intervention and the hard work you put into this, this would have been a disaster and it was avoided by that. And you know, you hear so many times and these awards internal ones is uh, that's, that, you know, people in the civil service don't work. Well, I can tell you the people who work in my department's work and they get results. And uh, this, this is another example of that. I'm so proud of the work you do. And again, a personal thank you and a thank you for, on behalf of the province. And not only that, but on all the sports fishermen that uh, go out there and that can enjoy the fish that you, you put in the rivers and the lakes and all the other great work you do. It's greatly appreciated. So thank you. And Stephen, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. Uh, thank you, Minister, for those uh, fine words and, and thank you for the recognition. And uh, you said it best, if it wasn't for the, the dedication of, of the staff of Fraser's Mills Fish Hatchery, uh, it very well could have ended up in a disaster. So um, again, thank you very much for the recognition. And uh, yeah, thank you. Congratulations, guys. Well done, yes. well deserved. Have a great rest of the day. Oh, and, and again, congratulations to everybody that's on the call. You're using the chat line. It's really great to see everybody passing on such positive, such positive com comments to all the winners. The next award is a is an Aquaculture Association award to the to the innovator of the year uh, in the aquaculture industry. And the innovation award acknowledges an individual, a group, an institution, or a company who has contributed to the advancement of aquaculture in Nova Scotia by the creation or application of new technologies and processes. Uh, this year, we're pleased to, to uh, present that award to Cook Aquaculture. Cook exemplifies East Coast ingenuity with in innovative technologies to ensure their products are the freshest, most sustainable, economically sound, and also of the highest quality. To achieve this, Cook invested $20 million to refurbish the Northeast Nutrition uh, Plant in Truro, a feed plant, and they've also implemented ROVs to open net clean, open net cleaning and use lumpfish as a natural way to manage sea lice. They've also developed a supplemental O2 system for the marine farms. And so congratulations to Cook Aquaculture. And I'd like to ask, uh, invite Scott Leslie of Cook Aquaculture to turn on his camera and join us, Scott. And there he is, Minister, I'll turn it over to you. Well, again, thank you very much, Tom. It's great to see uh, Cook making these advancements that they have in the province. And I'm excited about the new hatchery they're putting in place as well. It's, it's uh, long overdue and it's gonna be great economic uh, benefit to the Digby area. And indeed, uh, what, they're, what they're building there is a state-of-the-art facility that's gonna employ a lot of really uh, technical people with really well, uh, great careers with uh, great incomes that will help that community tremendously. So it's a lot of great things have happened. And I'm pleased to see that they continue to innovate and work uh, in the community. And as the biggest salmon producer in the province, it's, it's important to us that they, uh, that they stay here and, and uh, all the economic benefits from that in the industry. And our, our regulations are really uh, strong now and that it's something that Cook has embraced and we're very happy to see that. Probably they say, and companies outside the province want to come here and say we have the toughest regulation in the world. And, uh, but that was developed to make sure that the companies can succeed and the environments looked after and the com communities know that they're secure. And I want to thank Cook for the great work they're doing in that regard. Thank, thank you, Tom. And thank you, Minister Caldwell. Uh, it's my honor to accept this award on behalf of Cook Aquaculture. Uh, it's always been part of our mission to bring new technologies and innovation forward in the aquaculture industry to create ecologically sound and long-term sustainable jobs throughout Nova Scotia. Uh, it's our view here at Cook Aquaculture that Nova Scotia is truly becoming a center for excellence for marine research, not just in fin fish aquaculture, but across the full spectrum of the aquaculture industry here in Nova Scotia. 
Well, thank you, Scott, and congratulations to you and, and the entire team. And I know, Minister, that uh, over the last year when we combined our, our two conferences, Cook Aquaculture has been one of those companies that stepped up and embraced uh, working together and, and is, it wants to be part of the seafood, fisheries, aquaculture uh, experience and, and economy of Nova Scotia. Absolutely. Thanks, you Scott. Too. Have a great Thanks. day. You too. And moving forward, our next award is Sport Fish Conservation. Sustaining and developing our fish, our freshwater resources helps Nova Scotia provide an outstanding recreational fishing experience. This award recognizes an individual or organization that has demonstrated exceptional effort to restore, conserve, and protect Nova Scotia's sport fish habitat. This year's recipient is the Inverness South Anglers Association. Inverness South Anglers Association's mandate is to further in all ways possible the conservation, propagation and sustainment of salmon, trout, striped bass and other recreational fisheries in the watersheds in the communities of Judic, Port Hood, Mabu and Inverness. They have also conducted habitat restoration work on the Inverness South watershed over the past 15 years. They have been instrumental in having this watershed recognized as a provincial tourism attraction for its developed recreational fisheries. They have also been successful in raising awareness of sport fishing, developing the sport fishing industry through the Learn to Fish program and Children's Derby, and have assisted our Inland Fisheries Division with the Hatchery Stocking Program. Congratulations to the Inverness South Anglers Association, and I'd now like to ask Dave Cameron and some of his staff to turn on the camera and join us, and Minister, I'll turn it over to you. Well, I, I want to personally thank uh, Inverness South and Angler Association. Sports fishing in the province was a, a, a big business uh, in the uh, 30s and 40s, in this uh, 1930s and 40s in the province. And over time, that has changed because of acid rain and some other difficulties that uh, in habitat. So it's, it's through organizations like uh, the South Inverness the Anglers Association, we're changing that. We're, we're, we're spending a lot of effort now liming some rivers, doing the things they need to do. And it's so important. This is something we can do that's totally environmentally sound, brings back fish habitat. It preserves those rivers and lakes uh, so they can be enjoyed by generations, many, many generations to come. And the work that these organizations do um, is, is something else. All their, they take their time and their effort and put their, their personal expense, it has to cost them stuff personally as well to do this work. That's why it's so great that you know, we have these organizations to work with and we can see the benefits of uh, tourism in the province and the opportunity to enjoy, have someone come here and enjoy the province and wanna come back and bring their families and tell their friends to come and visit us. And while they're here, they can leave some money behind too to help the local economy which we sort of like a lot and it's fun. Now, unfortunately, as, fish, as fisheries minister, I haven't been fishing in eight years. And I started fishing when I was seven years old. Uh, and I love fly fishing and I just haven't had time. So I was hoping to get out this year, but it's still not looking good with COVID and the, uh, all the other issues I have to deal with every day. So thank you so much for the great work you continue to do. Uh, we're very willing partners, as you know, uh, to try to move the angling and sports fishing industry even further ahead and get some young children involved in it. It's a lifetime passion, take it from me, I know. And my passion now is in working in this industry uh, at the level I do. And uh, I think every day of going on the river, I can tell you that. So thank you again for the great work you've done. And we so appreciate it. Dave, why don't I turn it over to you and uh... I'll let you share. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Colwell, for bestowing this award upon us. Um, we're in about the same boat as you with being able to get out and get fishing. We don't get out very often ourselves either. But um, without the hard work, professional and diligent work of the crew, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish what we have over the past number of years. Uh, and besides the economic benefit that it produces through tourism, 
there's nothing uh, we like to see better than a young person riding their bike with a fishing rod sticking out of a knapsack and uh, or to see fish, people fishing along the banks of the river. If anybody ever wants to check out what we do, uh, we put up a new website called rivers, um, riversandfish.ca and that has a pretty comprehensive look at uh, the type of work we do, uh, lots of photographs and it's pretty informative. Um, I'd like to introduce our crew. Um, behind me, we've got on the, on the right is Nathan McLean, our crew chief. Uh, to his left is Michael Campbell. And then on my left in front, we've got uh, Kaylee Mortensen. She's our full-time field technician working year round. And then we've got uh, Jeff Nishi, who is also a director and secretary, and then, and then myself. But uh, we'd really like to acknowledge our partners as without their support, we'd not be able to achieve the results that we do. And number one is um, the Nova Scotia Fisheries and Aquaculture, the Inland Fisheries Division and Marbury Fish Hatchery. Um, we also get support from the Nova Scotia Salmon Association, adopt a stream program with the Nova Scotia Sport Fish Habitat Fund, uh, the Atlantic Salmon Conservation Foundation, uh, Fisheries and Oceans Canada, uh, Wild Salmon Unlimited, the Unimaki Institute of Natural Resources, and the municipality of the County of Inverness, and our many supporters and sponsors through donations and gifts as prizes for our fishing derby and provincial learn to fish program. Receiving this award enhances our credibility and can open doors for funding opportunities con to continue our mission. On behalf of the crew, volunteers and fellow directors, we'd like to thank you very much. Very well deserved. Congratulations, Dave, and all of the team. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's great. Great award. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on, folks. Uh, the next award is for sport fish development. And this award recognizes an individual, an organization that has demonstrated exceptional effort to promote and develop the Nova Scotia sport fishery. And this year's recipient, uh, is the Nova Scotia uh, Guide Service. And, you know, it's interesting, folks, when we started out this, I, I said that, you know, I was really kind of uh, saw the new fish Nova Scotia and thought you were going to see it first. Obviously, these folks uh, saw it before we did. So anyway, Nova Scotia Guide Service is a nonprofit organization run by volunteers that represent fishing guides across the province. They are a subcommittee of the Nova Scotia Guides Association, which celebrated their 100th anniversary in the fall. That's quite an accomplishment. They have been instrumental in getting children and families involved in sport fishing through the delivery of the Learn to Fish program and the Junior Guide School. The Nova Scotia Guide Service has been working with our Inland Fisheries Division to find innovative ways to increase the number of non-resident anglers that visit Nova Scotia and leverage the expertise of our fishing guides. They have participated in consultation with industry participants across the province, developed a guides professional professionalization plan, hosted and delivered workshops, and helped create a network of professional guides. Their work will be pivotal to growing the Nova Scotia's sport fishing industry. So congratulations to the Nova Scotia Guide Service. And I'd like to ask Carol Randall to turn on his camera and uh, Minister, I'll turn it over to you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, the Nova Scotia Guide Service has, uh, has been really great to work with. We, we've started a program to develop uh, more sports fishing and bring it back to hopefully somewhere near where it was years and years ago. And the, the Guide Service is part of that. We worked with them to develop some training programs, some package programs, and the reason they had that backdrop behind them, because they're an integral part of making all that happen. So they actually seen it before I seen it, which, <laughs> which I think is really good. Uh, that's the way it should be. And they've done a great job. I mean, they've uh, looked forward to new opportunities. I think that we have some great um, ambassadors for Nova Scotia and the guides. You get someone to come on a river and spend a peaceful time and, and, uh, Maybe catch a fish, maybe not, it doesn't matter. But if you go there and have a nice shore lunch and a beautiful day and a wonderful day, people will come back. 
and they have been coming back. And the more the guys can do that to, you know, make themselves more profitable, which is very, very important. They've got to make some money off of this. And, and I think that's pivotal in all this happening. At the same time, what a way to make a living. <laughs> think about that. Going fishing, going hunting, and taking someone else and see the surprise on somebody's face, uh, face that's maybe never caught a salmon or never caught a trout. And then wanting to come back year after year and see that guide and, and make lifelong relationships and friends. I, I envy them. And I respect them. And I truly, truly uh, know that they're going to make a difference in Nova Scotia's economy as we move forward. Sports fishing is, is something that I think the province has uh, not really uh, recognized for a long time. And if we're going to make this province a better place to live in, which was a wonderful place now, as we're seeing, people all want to come here. But it's going to be a mixed thing. You know, we have to have our, our commercial fish. We have to have our aquaculture. We have to have our sports fishing, all those things together. And they're all integrated. We have to make sure we protect the environment that all of them are in and we, we harvest uh, sustainably and all these things and make it an experience for people. And we're there, we're getting there. And it's just so uh, for me as minister, it's been such a pleasure to work with all these organizations and, and see the benefits they're bringing to the province. And thank you again, personally from me, and on behalf of the province of Nova Scotia and the residents of Nova Scotia. And I'm gonna to try to get on the someplace fishing this year, I have to. <laughs> um, Carol, I'm glad you were able to join us. That's great, you got your camera working. Yes, I did, thank you. Um, our association uh, has a, quite a history. We're a, yeah, last year we uh, sponsored our 100th anniversary and Minister Caldwell was there with us in September to uh, celebrate. Um, our biggest goal, I think the minister had acknowledged uh, earlier how important fishing was uh, back in the 30s and 40s and our association was very active in uh, bringing um, non-residents to our area. And in those days, it wasn't just for a day, it was for a long, long time, sometimes a week or two. And uh, we're trying to bring that back. We're trying to uh, increase fishing, not only from people that come to our province, but also expanding fishing in our province. And uh, we'll never become a, a, a big destination for uh, fishing but we can be a great alternative. And the guiding movement has been uh, um, very active in trying to help make that work. And we're very appreciative of the Inland Fisheries Division and especially one young lady who has uh, supplied an awful lot of leadership to this program and that's Sabrina Walters. And we'd like to acknowledge her leadership and hard work. Um, Minister Caldwell, you also mentioned how uh, hardworking your, your uh, staff in this department is. And um, I just want to acknowledge that uh, most of our work is evenings, weekends, and that kind of thing. And uh, they're beside us all the time. They're working hard on your behalf and our behalf. And uh, uh, an eight to five is not a, a, a type of uh, working relationship that they have. When they need to work, they work. And uh, we're really appreciative of that as well. Special thanks to uh, you and uh, your department for um, our, uh, our ward. And uh, we look forward to uh, uh, spending a, a lot of time with Inland Fisheries and making this even better. Now, I got one more thing I have to say and that is uh, the Inland Fisheries Minister must go fishing. Uh, that's not uh, something that uh, we think should, he should have to say anymore. So as a fishing guide in Nova Scotia, you have my invitation to be my guest for a day on a river of your choice. Um, and uh, we will spend a, a wonderful day fly fishing, spin casting, However you want to uh, spend your day, you'll be my guest. And uh, thank you very much for this great uh, award. And I also want to thank 
Uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, all the previous winners and uh, thank you very much. I'm gonna to try to take you up on that. Perfect. Minister, we'll have to get the premier to include that in your mandate letter. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> thank you very much, Carol. It's wonderful. Um, Great. And folks, we're almost there. Minister, before I turn it back to you uh, for your closing remarks, I've got a couple of things that I'd like to add. And number one, special, I think that, that not only today, but, but the five previous uh, sessions that, that, uh, the, that we all put on this year, special thanks go out to, to Lynn and Adam and Rachel from Perennia. Uh, countless uh, hours that they put into this. Uh, and, and great support. Uh, special thanks to, to Jordy and Cyril from your department minister from Department of Fisheries on building the, uh, the agendas and, and, the, and the time frames and doing all of that work. And here in my office, special thanks to, to Melissa. And so here's what I'd like to do folks is I'd like to take this minute to, uh, whoops, uh, no, I'm gonna, I'd like to take this minute to get everybody to, uh, Turn on your cameras and minister, I'm gonna uh, turn it over to you. So if all the winners, if all the recipients can turn on your cameras, uh, I'm gonna hopefully be, be able to share uh, all of these winners with everybody on the, uh, on the call. And as they're all coming in, uh, and thanks to everybody for all the active chat work, it was great, uh, Minister Caldwell. Uh, thank you. I mean, you, you, you've been here for a couple of hours now, but I've got one more task for you, and that's to, to, to please uh, give us some, some closing remarks. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tom. Thank you for the great job you've done today and the great working relationship we have with your association. It's very important to the economy of the province and, and it's good friends. I mean, that's what this is about. That's what Nova Scotia is about. Great people, good friends. And more we can share that and the more dedication we see and recognize the people that have done so much for the province. And I mean so much for the province. The industry, you know, and I talked to some of my colleagues have no concept of what this industry means to Nova Scotia. And when you tell them uh, exactly what's going on, it's almost disbelief. And uh, it's, it's good to see that the attitude is changing. And I wanna thank everybody that's got an award today. Everybody that works in the industry, uh, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter what you work at in the industry, it all contributes to our economy and our province. And I believe we have probably have the fastest growing economy now in Nova Scotia and Canada, if not North America. That's quite an accomplishment. And that's because of the dedicated people here in Nova Scotia that uh, love our province so much. And I wanna thank everybody today. And hopefully next year we can have a live conference in, it, in addition to a virtual conference, I think the two of them together would be incredible. So uh, when I started this in 1998, I never thought it would grow to this. And when I come back to minister, I said, well, we've got to make it even better. So we, that's why we put a trade show in. We invited Tom, you and your organization to join us. We brought sports fishing into it as well, because it's all the industry. That's the industry. We all have to work together to make sure we all win. It's better for our families better for our children, our grandchildren, and they have a lifestyle here that they can enjoy in a nice, clean, pristine province with a really good career that you don't have to go anywhere else. So thank you, everybody. And I look forward to hopefully seeing everybody in person soon. But we'll have to wait and see about that one. Thank you, Minister Caldwell. Thanks for, for sharing your time today. It was, it, it was wonderful to see you participate with all these uh, great award winners. Congratulations to all of the award winners. Uh, the, the work that you're doing is important to the province, to the industry, uh, to everything that we do. Thanks also to all the participants on the call today. Uh, your participation uh, is, I think we have more than 100, 120 odd people on the call today. Your participation is invaluable and uh, your support for these folks that do all the hard work every day uh, is recognition to them. So thanks everyone. Thanks minister, everyone. Have a great day and a great rest of the week.